Hi folks, Dan the Wolfman here, and today's presentation is going to be on full-size SHTF duty or training or home defense, nighttime home defense, 9mm pistols. I have already filmed a 20-minute tabletop going over the different triggers, the options, the barrel lengths, the specs, the current price, uh, etc. Though I don't like to talk about that because it can fluctuate so much, uh, but I am at the enclosed range. Right now it's enclosed and I'm the only one here on this side right now. If you hear rifle fire in the background, these are empty firearms. Breda 92A1 has been upgraded. I do have many other videos on this. Not all pistols are mine. Uh, some are friends and etc. have been sold. Uh, but I got them back for videos in all my videos and stuff like that. My duty weapon, HKP30L, John Wick's pistol. Why I choose John Wick's pistol. Very popular video with a lot of awesome range footage. And the little known, very good budget, Bursa TPR9. Now I have a good trigger time on the other two. I've only fired this like once or maybe twice, borrowed it. Um, so keep that in mind, Bursa TPR9. I go over the specs, the weights, you see the trigger pulls, uh, and go over all that in the tabletop. But please watch the range view. Let's see how they actually perform and which one is a good option for you at the range today. Because these are more military or duty pistols, I'm going to start with some slow fire stuff. Let's see accuracy and kind of get a feel of the trigger. I'll probably do some stuff at 12 if I get a chance at 25 yards. Uh, today I will, or hopefully at least at 15. But I'll probably start at 10 or 12 yards. I'll start with 124. Uh, because 124 NATO was the round, but our military has switched to this active duty. So it's also our official military round, the Winchester active duty M1152. This is technically a plus P plus round. It's well over 39,000 PSI. I would not use this ammo. I am not going to in micro compact guns. Compact, subcompact gun, since it's made for the military's M17, M18, which is basically a SIG P320 with a 4.7 inch barrel. Uh, I assume compact, subcompacts could, you know, handle a decent amount of it, but particularly like the these have buffer systems, the P30L and the Beretta 92A1 compared to regular Berettas compared to the regular P30. So they have a buffer system. They could absolutely handle a lot. Why would you use this? Well, the military thinks it's a good reason for, I'm sure, quite a few reasons. I would go over to that in the tabletop, uh, but you may want to use it as a training round that is similar to your 124 plus P or 124 plus P plus hollow point ammo for bigger guns. Again, I don't know if I would use it. Don't do it in the really small pocket micro compact nines. Uh, probably. Okay, so we will be evaluating the ammunition as well. I'll start with a uh, little bit of 124 from each uh, because that's the NATO round and as close as I have to the NATO round and then we'll see if they function good with this. So let's see how they perform. And here's a close-up look of the military's official MM M1152 M1152 152, 115 grain, really at a plus P plus velocity over 39,000 PSI, rated at 1,320 feet per second, assuming we out of the SIG P320 slash M17 4.7 inch barrel. You see it has a slightly different overall length, different ogive. It is basically a flat point versus a typical 124 grain ball round. All right, first five shots with the HKP 30L, working from Tulsa to Holster, use code, cold da code Dan the Wolfman to get 15% off. Has excess sights in it, so does the Beretta. Use code Dan the Wolfman, get 10% off there. 10 yards, slow fire, I will start in BA, so we'll see how far away, you know, all these are in BA. The first shot at 10 yards with 124 grain.
I don't know if I fired four or five. One, two, three, four, five, and I think tape was over that. So I don't know if I fired these four or also that fifth. I'd have to go back. So a little high. Again, I didn't remember combat hold or under hold. I think it was holding kind of there. So a little bit high. All right, guys, now the bread of 92A1 from a uh, Jam Custom Kydex. And uh, this has F8 excess sights on it. I believe this, is, this one is combat hold. We'll see. I have not shot these pistols in a while. All right, let's see how I did. Well, that's interesting. With the 92A1, I'm throwing my shots right. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not a group shooter. Just kind of getting re-familiar with these pistols before we start doing some actioning stuff. But as a right-handed shooter, that's a little weird that I was uh, pulling it right. All right, guys. First five with 124 grain with the TPR9. Again, I've only borrowed this one once or twice before, uh, and it's completely stock sight to stock everything. Let's see how I did on the splatter target on the right. Get through that last one a little left. Let's see how I did. And very much the best group so far with the TPR9 completely stuck. Uh, stock is a very good, uh, nice trigger, and I'm least familiar with it. Is that because the trigger is that much nicer? It's got a lighter hammer spring in it and it feels very good stock trigger or because I don't have a big bright orange like I do a uh, front night sight on the other two, which I think is better at C CQB defensive gun use distances. Uh, but that's very good. Maybe it's only because it was the third one and I'm just getting used to firing a day and I'm kind of alternating with someone else. There's a little bit of stress. Uh, all right, guys, 12 yards now. I'll go for the small target, the very small uh, target on the left with the bread at 92 and one. Starting in double action uh, with the M1152, my first round ever with it. Interesting to see if I'm throwing rounds a little bit right. Now I am keeping both eyes open. I'm right handed shooter, left eye dominant. And so interesting enough with the FA dot the I kind of sights, I am putting it a little bit right. Uh, these two are touching. So four here's a very nice group. I don't, it'd, be, it'd be nice if I could tell if that DA pole was the first one, but that's pretty nice. All right, now the TPR nine from 12 yards with the M1152 military flat ball, 115 plus B plus action. So we're evaluating the accuracy of that round a bit as well. And I felt a little bit of recoil in this one. Uh, it's a slightly lighter pistol, 30 ounces versus 33. And about the same as the Beretta, we got three that are close, one in the central box. We got four that are very close there with the Beretta, one on, towards the outside, one towards the outside, and one actually outside of it. So maybe slightly better with the Beretta on this one, but I did uh, increase my pace a little bit. All right, 12 yards now at the P30L on the right side. Still slow fire, seeing what the M1152 kind of handles in it and whatnot. From DA, the first pull. Decock on the back. Let's see how I did. Now again, I am not a group shooter. A lot of people could do a lot better at 10 and 12, 15 yards than I can with groups. Uh, these is a very small target that is a fist covering four out of five. Maybe a fist covering all five. These three, so two, three in the A zone on this micro USPSA type target. One just outside, 
and just outside. So best with the P30L, but that could also be because it's the third one I fired in the string. That's why I try to alternate and make things fair. We'll do some rock and roll stuff. You guys stay with me. We're going to do some rock and roll stuff. We're evaluating the pistols, the triggers, and the ammo. Okay. We're All right, guys, I got the three mini targets. I'm only at five yards, but this way you can see some uh, recoil cam at six yards, five and a half yards. Recoil. Uh, I'm going to go two middle, two left, two right, headshot, 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 and whichever way I feel comfortable with, with the TPR at nine. All right. Hey, guys, what's up, man? I don't want any trouble. I don't want trouble. And my earmuff was off a little bit, so I got a little bit of ear damage there. Let's see. Not great. I should work on smaller targets more often. Again, look how small it is. There's a hand, seven and a half inches. One, two. There's the headshot. When I came back, one, two. So that's typical low left on a two shot drill. That's not great. There's my headshot a little low on the way back. And these are very small. Keep in mind, one and two center line spot. All right, same drill with the bread at 92A1. Hey guys, what's up, man? Back off! See how I did. All right, so here better with the Beretta. That's pretty close. One, two. There's the headshot. And when I came back, right guy, two are just a little bit low. Again, keep in, keep in mind that's uh, four and a half, five inches. Two, three, and one. Now with the HK, you guys don't want any trouble. Look up! All right, let's see what I did. Micro size target A, B, A, A, B, A, B, B, but micro size, B, B, A, pretty good with HK. All right, not a scientific, just point ability and uh, naturalness and reaction and retreat drill, two, three yards and one hand at the first couple shots. I didn't do one-handed. Unfortunately, I got two hands on the gun. I want to practice more one-handed stuff. Two perfect upper thoracic A zones. Pretty close to each other. Headshot just a little bit low while scooting back. Two A zone upper thoracic. Perfect head box shot. A B and a C. A little low on her. That's not great. Headshot's a little right as well. But overall, not bad. That was with the bread at 92 E1. Treat Joe with the TPR9. Ah! Only thing about this is the cocker is a little backwards. Else. See what I did? Overall, pretty good. Those first two were one-handed on purpose. I held back from getting a second hand on the gun. You want to get two hands on the gun, but in real, realistically, up close, personal, the first couple shots, you may not. Good headshot on their tree A and barely a B, but those are good upper thoracic hits on this guy. Good headshot while scooting and moving back. Perfect A zone near the spine. Get some hollow point expansion, maybe. Uh, near the spine, this one not. And the stomach actually did shit. So C zone there and a perfect T box. Headshot, so a little bit better, real good with the TPR and I. All right, range is getting busy as it's about to get really cold and dark, so a uh, modified retreat drill on the two with the uh, TPR and I. Yeah, so I was a little bit different. I just kind of made it up as I went along. Like, you're going to have to react in the defensive gun use. 
So all four good upper thoracic hits here on Danny from uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Bad headshot, though. So that's my first really bad one. I had one questionable on her earlier. That's a really bad headshot on her. I got three A-box on her and one really good headshot. So all three are handling really good. And for the money, TPR-9 is good if you're not used to other guns because of the way that the decocker goes up instead of down. All right, guys, on two targets, I'm going to do a fast five and a fast five just to see kind of recoil ability, recoil control of these platforms. Usually I do that tactically at a five or a seven yard max, depending on the size and weight of the pistol. I want to do that at 10 yards. But for what these are for, military, police, maybe stress fire, um, I want to see kind of what the dispersion is like. All right, let's see how the Brita did. So all good hits in this inner kind of A box. Three are good upper thoracic. One's a little high in the throat, neck area, center line. That's good. One, two, three, four, and one down there, but still fairly good towards liberation and whatnot. But four out of five, very good uh, with the bread over here. We got one, two A zone here. One a little high, center line throat. One would be nicking her collarbone area. Probably not even there in the artery or anything. And one really low. So not as good over here. Pretty good over there. But it tells you a little bit something about recoil control. All right, losing light, getting cold. Another fast five, fast five, 10 yards. I don't recommend it, but I'm trying to show some differences here. 10 yards, uh, fast five, fast five with the uh, bursa. I reckon. I don't think so. I don't know why I froze between that second shot. That was a little something I did. I don't know. That was a little weird. A little, little extra beat in there. Not sure what that was about. So not as good that time. It is getting dark, and this just has plain white dots. Uh, nothing modified at all. Not even orange paint in the front dot. One, two, good too bad other than maybe taking out his weapon hand by luck and you know evolution going to the deadly thing uh but not as good and one up high here in his thumb and mustache and jaw line on the girl i got one two three b zone i mean not bad four that's not bad four upper thoracic that's an a zone that's perfect on the spine that would actually drop her and one up there so two a's three b's here two a's technically two b's and something else there uh so 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 i think it's the dark hurt me a bit same thing fast five ten yards wouldn't recommend it tactically but people may do this so we're trying to see differences in platform perhaps the weights and all that recoil control ability no lock back i often don't get locked back on this because my high grip on the hk uh, ammo's been great, like 120, 30 rounds in now. Ammo's been great, clean, reliable, uh, accurate. And on both targets, I got four really good ones and one questionable. Really, really good. Four, one, two, three, four. Really good center, good uh, upper thoracic punch right there on the guy. One bad one way up there. Two A zone breaking the line, two A zone there, two B still pretty good uh, on her. That's still eh, questionable, but still kind of awkward, maybe hitting the bottom of the lungs. And then one way off to the side there. So four out of five good with the HK. These four were very close and very good. Uh, but that has night sights. The, the Bursa did not. The other two have a bit br big, bright orange front night sight, and we are really losing the light. And I have these dark yellow glasses I train in. There. If you've stayed with me so far, thank you very much. Now let's finish up now that I'm alone at the enclosed range and fenced in uh, private ish range. Uh, private range. We're going to uh, go at 25 yards. It's a little skewed. Sorry, we'll just deal with it. 25 yards, it's really dark, and my glasses are dark yellow, so I'm always like training in appreciation. HK first. Five shots of the M1152, which has been doing great. It's nice and hot. In case you couldn't see with the HK, that was a nice, pretty tight group with the five. Just two were a little too high. 
Now with the Bursa 25 yards, super, super dark with a tint, and I'm going on the blue sweatshirt wearing active shooter target. Look at my realistic dick and drill video. I've been now doing 25 yards as regular as I can when I'm alone at the enclosed fenced-in range. Only white dots on this. All right, let's see how I did with the bursa. All right, and in the tape, you can see the five with the, uh, in case you couldn't make it out in the dark earlier, the five with the HK, and two were too high up there with the HK. Guys, now with the Bursa, I got all five hits. I realized I was shooting a little high, pulled the front sight down a little bit by looking at his shoulder width. You know, at long range, guys, in the dark, sometimes things are hard. But all five, one, two, three, four, five, five good fight stopping, stopping an active killer type hits with the Bursa. So it's holding its own. Hopefully you can see me a little bit. I realize how dark it is. You can barely see I put a little light here by the camera. Now finishing up with the Beretta. Um, the dot the eye style FA night sights from SX sights seem better for nighttime fighting, uh, and I hear they work better with nods with night vision as well. Uh, it seemed easy to align. We'll see if I got good hits, but it seemed like these are the good night sights for nighttime. And guys, I can barely see, uh, but I got four out of five now. Obviously, it turns out I was aiming a little too high with the Beretta. One, two there. Perfect headshot, a little luck there, a little high, but see that's kind of his center line. His center line would kind of be this, like in front of his spine, up and down his body based on the angle, and one the back of the head, probably put him down at least, and one miss, unfortunately, with the bread. And now it is super, super, super dark, especially with my dark glasses. Uh, but anyway, guys, let's put that light on me. Let's see if I can do something creepy cool. Hopefully. You have enjoyed this DASA full size SHTF duty pistol, military pistol, something to consider for nighttime duty with a weapon mounted light on it. Um, I think that these are all good choices. The Bursa seem to hold its own. Uh, it's, the, the grip is a little bit wider, it's a little bit slicker, it's not as nice as like the Breda, especially once I put the Aluma grips on, it's not as, not as nice as the Spider-Man uh, Batman grips on the P30L, but it's a very good pistol for the money. Uh, if you want a SHTF for the end of the world pistol, you can't go wrong with any HK. Uh, run thousands of rounds, need no replacements, after 93,000 rounds, even if a parts break, still going strong, uh, etc. Run it dry, it's great, no replacements. Beretta's proven itself, as long as you did change recoil springs occasionally and locking blocks. So I think any of those would make good SHTF type weapons. If you need more concealed carry size, uh, look at my best DASA CCW carry pistols, comparing two of the lighter, uh, more subcompact size. Uh, also, as I ammo evaluation, I'm about 130 rounds in, perfect. Everything fired perfect, clean, accurate. Uh, nothing strange, all very hot loaded, all loaded great in three different pistols. So let me know. I would not recommend it in smaller than subcompacts. No micros. Subcompact compacts could probably do some of it. I wouldn't do it all the time. But for SHTF ammo and uh, maybe training ammo for something that simulates your plus P hollow points, um, it might be worth looking into for your bigger pistols and for animal defense as well, being a somewhat flat MEP plate, just like typical 40s.